So hi everybody um, and welcome to, I think this is our third or fourth webinar, um, completely lost track how many I've done of these, um, but it's good to see that we're still getting a good number of people attending. Obviously we're giving hopefully good content out and I think we are by the number of questions that we're getting afterwards that people are sort of quite interested in obviously what, what can help them in their business um, and we thought we'll do this one all, all on, uh, about the business interruption loan scheme, getting loads of questions now about this, now that people have got, got their heads around how the furlough works and they've got their heads around how it works for the self-employed. So I thought I'll go ahead, hopefully we'll be finished in an hour, four o'clock, um, and let's see how we get on. So just a quick um, housekeeping Q&A. As you can see on the Zoom, there should be a, a button towards the bottom of the screen for, for to you to enable you to put your Q and A questions in. Um, after the last webinar, as soon as we we started the webinar, I think within about five minutes we had about seventy questions. A lot of them were being answered as we went through the presentation. So could you sort of bear with us as we get sort of towards the end of the presentation, ask your questions because hopefully we'll have answered a lot of them as we go through. And Paul is online here as well. He's our CBILS expert, as well as a furlough expert, as well as a self-employed expert. Um, and he's, the idea is gonna go through and answer any of the questions as they pop up in the Q&A part of the webinar. Um, if you've got any questions, then use the chat. Um, I'll, I'll quickly look in on Paul Will as well to see if there's anything that anyone has got any questions as we go through. So. Well, the next two or three slides is a really quick intro of what the scheme's about. Now, what I must do is explain to you that the C-Bills is not a brand new loan or a brand new funding facility that has been um, thought about by the government two or three weeks ago. Now, the C-Bills is exactly the same as any other loan that you would normally get from your bank. So all, the only difference is that the C-bills is then guaranteed by the bank where you cannot put security up. So when you're applying to the bank for any funding, they were gonna go through in exactly the same criteria than they would before all this happens. And, and if you were applying for a loan for any other reason. So you just gotta bear that in mind that this is not a new scheme. It's an existing, they're using the existing schemes that were out there already, but they've just made it a, a little bit easier for people to obtain the loans because um, quite a few people didn't have the security um, and the government have come in and stepped in and said look if there's no security then we will cover it so that I have to make that very very clear because I'm getting a lot of questions about how the scheme works um, what lending criteria is in it and it's exactly the same as any other loan that you went for so there's a little bit of background how it came about um, and what, what it's meant to be doing um, to help small businesses. These are the key features, finance up to five million pounds um, and the scheme provides a lender with a government backed partial guarantee against the outstanding balance of the finance which is what I just explained um, and the government have come in and said they will pay the interest and fees for the first 12 months so interest free um, and I think that the maximum period you can get is for six years as, as a loan. Yeah, so there you go. First asset finance facilities up to six years um, and overdrafts and invoice finance up to three years. So this is the interesting bit as well that's just been announced, I think it was yesterday, is that the, um, the banks can now offer the loan without any personal guarantees up to £250,000 facility which is very interesting. So a lot of the banks were offering these loans but the, the way it worked is that they were going through the normal loan criteria, normal loan procedures, and it was only then if you failed that application that you would then go ahead in the C bills. So a lot of people were saying, well, what's the point? <laughs> I don't particularly want the loan with all the security that I need to put up with it. I want the C bills, but the banks were saying, no, you can't do that. However, now they've said that you can have facilities up to 250 grand, no personal but guarantees. Above that, obviously, they will look for normal security. And each bank and each lender will maybe look differently whether residential property can be taken or not. Um, some banks will take some form of property as security and some won't. So it all depends on the lender 
um, and then no, and then no guarantee fees for the SMEs, which is very handy as well. So they're really the key features of the C bills, and they're exactly the same features as, as if you went for a normal loan. So what I thought I would start, rather than do this at the end, at the start, I thought I'd show you some stats that we've sort of discovered um, late last night. So there have been 130,000 inquiries from businesses across the sector, across the country for these loans. And you wouldn't believe it, only a, less than a thousand have actually, have, had actually the finance approved. The banks are processing thousands of loan applications as quickly as they can, which is very difficult when I think a third of the branches have now been closed or no one's there helping with the applications. And they can't keep up to speed with the changes because it's, it is changing on a daily basis and their IT systems have to be updated to cope with this. So that works out at a 0.75% approval rate. And I know, and a lot of partners within the practice are saying that the, the, guy, the businesses need the funding sort of today, not in two or three weeks time. And they can't wait for the banks to deal with the applications, get through, you submit the application, you have correspondence with the banks and then they turn you down. It's just too late. Um, and I know there's been a lot of lobbying and a lot of um, communication with the Chancellor to try and improve the system. So again, re-emphasizing that the banks are still treating everything on the basis of normal underwriting so any business with problems pre-COVID are unlikely to get any support and we have seen this happening day in day out as well. So again some more insights, um, many businesses have been told that they aren't liable, viable because um, they're highly geared which can be understandable if you've got recent projects or finance that you've recently taken on board. If you've had losses over the last few years, they're going to take that into account and that will obviously affect um, the ability to get the loan. Other sort of non-high street banks, Funding Circle and, th and those sort of businesses are still waiting for accreditation. This is taking far too long for them to come into the market. However, now if you can get 250 unsecured, whether they will want to get into the market, it'll be, we will have to wait and see. At the beginning, there, there were some rumours that some of the banks were charging huge amounts of interest, 20 to 30 percent. But we have seen a couple of offers from Barclays where it's three percent over base, which is a, which is a really good, attractive um, interest rate. Um, where there are a small, small lenders out there who will be um, accredited, so they are worth going to if the mainstream bank turns you down. <clears throat> Cash flow, again. I heard that they're trying, they're relaxing the cash, the requirements to prove cash flow forecasting. Um, however, that's a bit weird that they're not going to want to see the cash flows um, to approve a loan. But to be honest, a bit all businesses, if they are getting loans, should be putting together forecasts and cash flows for the next 18 months just to see for their own peace of mind and for their own business to see where the cash is coming in or going out and see where there's any peaks and troughs. But the bank will. I think it will help the application as well if you can produce an 18 month cash flow forecast. Um, so, and also we heard that, that, it, that it was your existing banks that were only looking at the applications because of the huge amounts of volume, any banks, if you were going to a new bank for any of these loans, they were, you were being turned away. So you had to go to your existing bank, speak to your bank manager if you could actually get to speak to your bank manager if you knew who they were. Um, and it was really difficult to go to a, another bank to get an, a loan, um, which has caused problems as well. And we are encouraging clients to focus on other funding measures first. Don't use this as your sort of get out of jail card. Um, you really should be doing this in, in conjunction with a lot of other cash flow saving um, measures that we've, we've discussed previously. So I thought this would be quite interesting. Just I asked the partners this morning um, what their um, feeling is in the market, what, what feedback they're getting from clients. And I thought I'll just um, copy some of the comments from a couple of partners there. So as you can see that some of the banks are being very helpful with capital repayment holidays. Um, however, to actually get um, the C-bills loan is taking a long time and those with no existing facilities, this seems to be really problematic, uh, which is from Gary. Andrew's mentioned that 
he hasn't seen any success yet and there's an application to NatWest um, and this was a comment from one of the, the businesses um, where it was turned down by NatWest um, purely on the fact that the business, the, the figures just weren't strong enough to support the loan application. Um, it, they sort of ignored what's going on in, in the current climate and not really put themselves out to help the business. So um, that's quite interesting to see what's going on in the marketplace. And Barry's here has had, again, some mixed stories. Um, very helpful um, conference call with Barclays, who wanted to obviously try and take some business from a competitor, um, and they were try very keen to get um, that up and running. <clears throat> and that came from a, an introduction from Capitalize. We use Capitalize as our funding partner to sort of try and go to the market where they've got access to hundreds of lenders. Um, so rather than just going to one or two, they go to the to the whole market. Again, haven't heard any horror stories, but again, moving very slowly, which is not what what businesses need to hear at the moment. So some just questions that we've been asked as, as we go through the presentation um, and, and we've been asked for the last couple of weeks. So who can apply? Who's eligible for the scheme? Any UK business with turnover of no more than £45 million. Um, open to sole traders and partnerships, just not to limited companies and have a boring proposal which were, this is a very important one, not for the current pandemic, would be considered viable by the lender and for which the lender believes the provision of finance will enable the business to trade out of the short term to medium term difficulty. Now, I had a client phone me from his sick bed. I think he had been two weeks in isolation, phoned me up and said, right, I've heard about this loan. I need 50 grand by next week. Can you maybe arrange it for me? And I said, well, that's not really the, the, <laughs> how it works. As again, he was under the impression that the government had got this, I think it was 330 million billion pounds um, available and start just lending people money. It's just not how it works. So just bear that in mind when you are talking to your bank or lender. How can you access the scheme? We've talked about this through the, the is, this is via, via the British Business Banks, the 40 plus accredited lenders, which are all the high street banks. Um, and that's, we've put that there, should approach their own provider, ideally <coughs> via the lender's website. So this is your existing bank. They also may consider, so at the same time, you want to maybe look to see if there are other lenders in the market that can help you. So again, contact us, we'll put it through to Capitalize and they'll see if there's any other lenders that are willing to help you during this time. Um, Asset-based lenders and sort of factoring dis invoice discounting lending is very um, sort of popular now. And also if you have got a debtor book that <coughs> has got some sort of um, some cash in there, then I think a lot of those those lenders are very willing to, to lend on, on that basis rather than going through a normal lending facility. So what they will do is look at the whole lending criteria, whether it is increasing your overdraft, whether it is doing some invoice discounting, whether it is doing some asset finance, and then maybe a loan to sort of top it up. They will look at the whole picture. Also, um, very interesting, the scheme rules are such that a maximum of 25% of the annual turnover or double the annual wage bill is available, which to be honest, until I started the presentation, I wasn't even aware of that, that those rules. So that's quite interesting. So bear in mind what the limitations are of get, getting the loan through this scheme, through the C-bill scheme. If you're going through obviously the normal lending criteria as a loan as you normally would, these, these rules would not apply. But if you then fail <coughs> the normal lending criteria, go to the C-bills sort of um, scheme, then there's some restrictions there. The lenders included are after very specific information. So just be aware that you need to have all this information available um, and submit this with the application. If you do it in dribs and drabs, then to, to process the application will take a long time. You wanna get everything to them, all the information, all in one go. So they're gonna look at your three years accounts. They're gonna look at your last six months bank statements, up-to-date management accounts. This is really important. If you turn around and said, my last year end accounts were, I don't know, December 18, haven't got around to doing my December 19 year accounts and I've got no management accounts, they're not gonna consider it because those accounts are nearly two years old. They're gonna to wanna to see how you're trading now, what the effect is of um, COVID on your business and so forth. So. And it gives, them, it gives them comfort that you're on top of the finances. So you do really need to 
have upstate management accounts. Speak to us um, if you need those management accounts prepared. Um, obviously, if you're using Xero or QBO QuickBooks Online, you should be able to obtain this information fairly quickly using real-time um, bookkeeping systems. Again, your age, debtor and creditor lists, you should be able to pull from those systems, maybe tidy them up, make sure that they look clean and any old debts that or creditors on there, just tidy them up and maybe make, make sure that it looks, it looks clean before you send it to the bank. Any outstanding debt, obviously they're gonna to wanna to know what other debt you've got and we'll obviously take all of that into account when they're looking at the new loan. If you're very highly geared, maybe you've taken out some recent finance for an asset or to fund a project, they're gonna take that into account. And if they don't think the business is viable for a 250 grand loan to get them through the next six months, they're gonna turn it down. And that means that you won't get the C-bills anyway. So if you, they turn you down for the original grant, it doesn't mean right now, can I ask for a C-bills loan? Because it's the same thing. Um, they won't, you won't then go to a, get a C-bills loan. You then have to start the process again with another lender and then try and see if you can actually get some finance um, elsewhere. And they're gonna want to see all your personal assets, liabilities, income and expenditure from all the directors as well. A lot of information they're asking for, which is understandable because again, it's just a normal loan that they're obviously offering to you. Other information they could ask for, or they will ask for, um, how will the funds be used, amount required, and how this amount has been derived. It's just not, well, I think I need 250 to get through it. You've got to explain why you think you need 250. Obviously, you're going to want to see that nice graph where it goes, it starts sort of low and it comes back up and you can see the turnover increasing, hopefully when we get out of this. Um, any other schemes that you've used, what are your largest costs currently, um, and what have you been doing to try and reduce them? That they're, very, um, they're asking a lot of questions of what you've put done at, for now, who you've furloughed, what costs have you reduced, have you spoken to your landlord? A lot of that information they're gonna to wanna to see before they consider the loan application. Up to date cash flow, cash flow forecast we've talked about really important <clears throat> doing them simply on excel is good enough you can use sort of um, a bit more advanced software that links with zero to get some really good meaningful um, cash flows really quickly again we can help you with that if, if you if you do need it to help with your loan application and when the pandemic is resolved how long do you believe it will take to start recovery that million and dollar one question we just don't know but they're going to want to know some idea of how that's going to work um, and what you're doing in the short and long term to help drive the business back. Great question here, time to the fund. So how quick are we going to get the money? Right, so how long does it take from submitting an application to receiving money in your account to pay your rent, payroll and suppliers? And I think this is going to be really important because come the end of April, um, loads of people are furloughing their staff because obviously there's no work. And HMRC, the government has turned around and says that hopefully, and they've said hopefully by the end of April, the software, the scheme will be up and running to enable you to be able to pay the staff wages that you're paying at the end of the month. Now, somebody contacted me, a client contacted me this morning saying he's heard that something's available to submit. And I've trawled the internet and we would be one of the first to know if a scheme has been set up to enable us to do the submissions, but they haven't. So I think the big crunch is going to come the end of April when wages need to be paid and no one's got the cash to pay them. Whether the loan, you're going to get the loan in time between now and the end of April to help you fund that wages payments, who knows? Because it's taken two to four weeks for an unsecured loan, which is your term loans or invoice finance to be um, set up and four to 12 for secured. So that's lending security against property assets, et cetera. So the lead time is, is, is quite long. Um, and everyone's assuming that the loans are, are immediate and yes, great, the next day I'm gonna have some funds in my bank account. It just doesn't work like that. So just be aware of that when you're trying to work out your cash flow over the next three to four weeks, especially at the end of April. Um, so yeah, the last, sort of sentence as a result businesses may wish to apply for non c bills products alongside the c bills to have wider range of options to choose from so we've covered this on previous um 
webinars, but try and agree rent free periods with your landlords. Um, <clears throat> the government has included a three month commercial rent moratorium in their measures, which prevents e eviction. Um, which gives you a little bit of comfort if the landlord does turn around and say, no, we're not reducing it, at least if you don't pay them, they won't evict you for the next three months, which is some consolation. Um, but you just got to try and look at all your costs and as much as you possibly can, try and get payment holidays on business loans and other credit payments, such as AP and asset finance. Um, again, each lender is different. Each lender is taking a different stance on this. I know some lenders have... Um, flatly refused any payment holidays, but some have turned around and said, yes, great, three months, don't pay us anything, we'll, we'll just add it on to the end of the term. So you do need to ask and you need to see what is available out there. Spot invoice financing, it could be very useful, a little bit expensive. Um, I have heard that, um, I think it's Satago will spot invoice and uh, spot finance an invoice, basically they will buy the finance and lend you 85% on that invoice if it's sort of a blue chip or a very low risk um, customer um, and they'll lend you 85 percent the next day so it gives you a bit of cash Pro the cost is anywhere between two and five percent per month on that invoice so quite expensive but if it, if it enables you to get the cash then 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 great market financing do, do the same sort of um, facility but i think their minimum um, invoice is £25,000, so maybe doesn't help um, the smaller businesses. But definitely look look to see what's out there in the market regarding the spot invoice financing, which is really good because it saves you invoicing your whole debtor book. You don't really want to, if you've got some really good payers, you don't want to then have the, the cost of um, factoring all of those. And you can just pick and choose those that you want to put through the system. Look at assets that the bank won't be too interested in losing from their dimensions if you could raise finance on them for example stock vehicles plant machinery um, obviously you, you, your property as well so is there anything you can actually try and raise some money on the asset because it's a lot easier getting finance on assets because obviously there's um, a char charge that the lender can take over that asset um, so it does seem um, a lot easier to do to do the asset financing be prepared banks will assess applications in the same way they have always done we talked about this because they use the same processes systems and people so they are asking for business plans management accounts forecasts and this essential part of the application um, if you do need a, a forecast template um, let me know I've, I've got a simple template that, that clients have been using to help them put together their, their, their forecasting templates for the bank how do i apply it um, so what a lot of the banks are saying obviously go to their website first um, if you obviously got a strong relationship with your your bank and have a relationship manager then speak to them um, see how <coughs> how they can help you um, again speak to other lenders if, if you can um, speak to us because obviously we've got a relationship with capitalize our finance partnership with them um, we have access to over 100 lenders 10 of which Oh, the C-bills are accredited. I think it's actually gone up since then. I think it's about 40 now um, that can actually do the C-bills accreditation if you obviously don't pass the, the original loan application. Quite straightforward, we will just send you a, a, a form to complete, which gives us a lot of standing information, um, and then we can decide what how we go about that. So, Is there a fee for going through? So no, we... we Prior to all of this, we would charge um, a flat £500 fee for um, processing the application with Capitalize and giving them all the information that they need. But how, however, during these difficult few weeks and months coming up, um, we're not going to be charging anything for this. So just complete the form. We'll upload as much information as we have um, to Capitalize and they will then contact either us or the business owner to then follow the application through. Um, if your bank isn't on the C-bills list, uh, most, most of the high street banks are on the C-bills list. Um, as a result, if you're your client, so yeah, you, you should be able to, to apply it through the high street bank um, and maybe look at those other lenders once they start coming on board over the next few weeks. Um, they have said that you don't need to have security or put your primary residence up as security now. 
they're saying they will lend up to 250 with no personal guarantees at all, um, which, is, which is really good news. Um, refinancing loans, um, the government has shared guidance that CBILS is expected to be available for refinance existing loans. So you can, but again, this is all part of the underwriting process. Th what that means is that each bank will look at the, the application on its own merits. If they feel that there is a lot of lending, existing lending they can take over a, a better rate, um, a longer term to help the business get through it, they might do that. But again, as long as the security is there or the business can be seen to get out of um, the cash flow problems at the moment, they will then consider um, refinancing loans. Um, and that would, again, as, normal, as part of a normal loan process. Again, you need to speak to the bank, make it very clear at the beginning, make them really um, understand how your existing finances are working um, and be completely clear that, yes, look, look, I've got some big loans, I want to then move, would you be able to help us? Um, I think it's worth having that conversation early on and um, without having to go through a whole application and at the end finding out that it actually doesn't work for, you, for your circumstances. Um, is the loan the right solution for me? Now, there's a lot of commentary um, out there at the moment saying that businesses should not then put themselves into debt to get out of this problem. They should be obviously looking at all other solutions before get, getting a loan. However, if, the, if this is the only solution to get you out of the problem and you've done everything you possibly can to help the cash flow, businesses don't have much choice. There, there, there are calls to the Chancellor to change or bring up a new scheme or look at other ways to help support businesses uh, rather than going, going through this loan situation because I'm speaking to clients that if they're deferring their VAT POA court tax, um, their self-assessment with um, payment July, all of those taxes, all, all they're being is deferred. They're not actually being cancelled. And then you've got a big loan that you've taken out as well and you've got the repayments there. So when we come out of this, the, the cash drain on the business to try and catch up is going to be massive. So where possible, if you don't have to take a loan, try not to and just work through it and try and get out the other side. And I've said to a lot of clients, we really do need to sit and work your cash flow properly, have a proper cash flow management system when we come out of this to make sure that the worst thing you wouldn't want to do is get through the, the next two or three months and then your business fails because either you, you're really busy, you need cash to, to get through the busy periods because you need to fund suppliers, wages and stuff before you get paid. And you've got all this tax that's kicking in towards the end of the year. So that's why we're saying to people, loans, if you really, really have to as a last result to get through this, this uh, in the next few months. Um, <clears throat> even clients talking, you've got businesses talking to each other about acquiring each other, maybe um, economies of scale cutting back their overheads. I think what this has proved that over, over the last few weeks is it's amazing the overheads that you can cut if you really have to. Um, <clears throat> and it's sort of, it's forced us to, to look at um, the profit first um, method and the systems that we've been trying to get our clients to look at um, and to be honest the whole cash flow management looking at your overheads all sort of um, complements that system and I think as we come out out of uh, out of this mess that I think businesses will I think to be honest will be in a stronger position because they've really cut their overheads um, and will just keep going using the same sort of um, method, methodology going forward um, and then we can help them sort of implement a cash flow management system to really help them. And the last part there, the R&D claims. So it's quite, it's quite funny that even though HMRC have sort of cut their workforce back um, and a lot of them are working from home, we have been told that they are processing R&D claims a lot quicker than they have been. Normally it was a four to six week turnaround to get your refund. Um, hopefully we've been told within a couple of weeks they're now processing refunds. So review, review your systems, review your processes in, in your business. 
Is there anything that's r and Dable that we can claim um, some t corporation tax back for you? We, we're holding a, a, an R&D webinar at the end of April. Um, Neil Staff, our tax partner, who's our R&D expert, is running a, a very um, um, detailed webinar, how businesses can apply for it, what businesses can apply for it, and how you can go about getting some tax back in addition to everything else that is, is out there on offer. So do, do listen to that. If you have any questions about R&D, by all means, send us an email. Neil was more than willing to just look at your cases individually, just to see if there's anything in there, has a conversation to really get into the detail of your business and just sort of dig around a bit, just to see if there is any potential claims that, that, that you've got. And it's amazing we've done I don't know the stats, but we've done a lot of businesses that you would never think would be an r and dable claims and businesses in printing that somebody asked us, um, I think it was yesterday, we've done quite a lot now in construction um, and property development where you, you can get R&D claims. Um, and any, any business is worth having a look just to see if there's anything in there that, that we can help you with. So do we, do you have any other options? So, um, not a very nice statistic. The first paragraph, 18% of all SMEs are, are likely to collapse within the next four weeks, unless the government steps in. Um, I think they've hugely underestimated the um, SME market and how the SMEs um, are so important to the economy and the workforce that the SMEs then employ. Um, and it's so important that the government are aware of this and a lot of people are lobbying them. Um, we have heard that we're expecting further announcements from the Chancellor how they're going to help SMEs. Without doubt, if they do, it will be 5.30 this evening. It's always on a Friday at 5.30, so it doesn't leave us long to sort of get to the detail of what, what they've announced. Um, so over the weekend, we know we would, if, it, if it is announced, we'll put something together and early next week hopefully on monday we'll be sending stuff out if there is anything out there um, to, to help other businesses the smes rather than this loan situation right so hopefully um paul how have we got on have we done well with the questions i think yeah bloody, you've cleared them all paul how have you cleared them all i'm going to put you on speaker oh i can't hear you no, it doesn't matter. Anyway, but it looks like you've cleared all of them. There's none there that I need to, to worry about. Um, well done, Paul. So through the chat, um, have, you, have you gone through the chat as well? I think people are sort of using chat and q and If there's anything there that we haven't answered, we'll do a QA and a session, um, sort of feedback form that we've done on previous webinars, which I think a lot of people found useful. This webinar is being recorded and will be sent out on Monday. So if you do want to um, pass it on to anybody, you're more than welcome to. Um, and I think it'd be quite useful um, to see how the C-bills is working. And I think over the next few days, not few days, but I think early next week, we'll, we'll know exactly more about how easy it is to get these loans and how quickly the banks are actually helping the SMEs. So. without any further ado. So I hope everyone keeps well, um, has a good weekend, uh, has their hours exercise a day. Um, hopefully next week, we'll see if there's any changes, keep an, out, out, an eye out for our webinar, our emails, that we will announce any further webinars. But I think we've covered a lot of them with the furloughs and the general webinars we did early on in this webinar. Um, it, we could do one next week, just maybe a, a, an open Q&A session which I've seen quite a few people do which is quite nice that we, we might open it up um, and see how that works but hopefully you you found this interesting and you've got some answers to a lot of your questions so thank you very much and hopefully we'll speak to you all soon thank you <laughs>